Haggai 1 verse 8 Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it and will be glorified, says Jehovah. The central thought of the book of Haggai is that the building of the house of Jehovah is related to the welfare of God's people today and to the coming of the millennial kingdom with its Messiah in the age of restoration. In the Old Testament the house of God, or the temple, was a type first of Christ as the house of God individually, and then of the church, the body, the enlarged Christ, as God's house corporately. Thus, we should consider that Haggai refers to us, since we are the reality of the type. Jehovah's dealing with the returned captives signifies his dealing with us in the recovery. In Haggai 1 verses 2 to 6, 9 to 11 we have Jehovah's rebuke. The people's excuse for delaying to rebuild the house of Jehovah was that the time had not yet come. The people's excuse is followed by Jehovah's question. Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled up houses while this house lies waste? They were taking care of their houses, but not Jehovah's house, so he came in to ask them concerning his house, in verses 5, 6, and 9 through 11 we have Jehovah's dealing with the self-caring and God-neglecting returned captives. In his dealing, the first thing Jehovah did was to charge the people to consider their ways. Jehovah pointed out that the returned captives had sown much, but had brought in little, that they had eaten and drunk, but without satisfaction, that they had clothed themselves, but without being warmed, and that they had earned wages to put them into a bag with holes. This tells us that if we do not have the heart to take care of God's house for his satisfaction, no matter how much we eat or drink or how well we dress ourselves, there will be no satisfaction. If we neglect the church, we will have no real enjoyment or satisfaction. The word run in verse 9 indicates that the people were busy caring for their own houses. Today some saints are so busy caring for their own houses that they have no time to attend the meetings. As we consider this, we need to realize that in the entire universe there is no such thing as neutrality. We must be absolute. We must either take care of our houses first or take care of the Lord's house first. My point here is that we need to learn to save some time for the Lord's interests. How many sinners are waiting for our visitation? How many saints, especially younger ones, are waiting for our cherishing and nourishing? When the Lord comes to settle accounts with us, he will surely rebuke us. It has been difficult for us to get the increase, not mainly because of our environment, but because of our excuses. Alibis. Praise the Lord.